Perovskite, discovered by scientists nearly 200 years ago, has only recently come to be seen as a promising element for creating cheap and efficient solar cells. Although this mineral is quite rare on Earth, in the early 2010s, scientists were able to create its synthetic analog, calcium titanate. The substance has gained popularity among scientists, who said that synthetic perovskite could completely change the rules of the renewable energy game. The science well-known journal even included perovskite in the top 10 breakthrough inventions of 2013, and several companies have already noted that they are close to its industrial production. While several new photovoltaic materials have emerged in recent decades, none has made much of a dent in the market which is dominated by silicon. It is found in around 95% of existing solar cells, notes MIT Technology Review, one of the world's most famous media companies. This poses serious environmental and health concerns. Before silicon is used in panels, it undergoes a special treatment that generates toxic waste in the form of silicon tetrachloride. On average, for the production of one ton of processed silicon, three to four tons of this poisonous substance are obtained. Without a special disposal procedure, this substance mixes with water and forms hydrochloric acid, which kills all living things. In March 2008, journalists from the Washington Post published their investigation, where they found out that the Luoyang Zhonghui High Technology Company, Chinese company, threw out silicon tetrachloride instead of recycling it. This caused a sharp increase in the incidence of the local population, the most common problems with vision and throat. The Chinese government took action and in 2011 set standards. Companies are required to recycle at least 98.5% of this toxic substance. However, similar violations still occur today. Another significant disadvantage of using silicon in solar cells is its low efficiency, up to 25% on average. In other words, these solar panels do not recycle up to three-quarters of the sun's radiation. After gaining prominence for synthetic perovskite in 2013, many companies have started developing technologies for its use. But why did the world's scientists announce the gigantic prospects of this substance so quickly? Conventional silicon solar panels with a thickness of 180 microns absorb as much solar radiation as one micron of perovskite absorbs. In addition, this substance can absorb a wider range of light, increasing its potential efficiency. Thus, the potential efficiency of perovskite may be greater than the notorious 25% for silica. Another advantage is that calcium titanate can be produced very easily on an industrial scale, unlike the real perovskite mineral, which is difficult to find in process. It also bypasses silicon processing for its low cost, without the threat of creating excess toxic substances like silicon tetrachloride. What is more, it is easily processed, which is important for the preservation of the environment. Another strong point is the long service life. If silicon solar cells deteriorate over time, reducing efficiency, then perovskite panels can last much longer while maintaining their efficiency. Thus, the potential for using synthetic perovskite is enormous. It was calculated that if we produce solar panels from perovskite with the same efficiency as existing panels, then their cost will be five to seven times lower than traditional ones. However, it took much longer than scientists expected to fully complete creating this technology. This was primarily due to the rapid self-destruction. At first, scientists even had to run from one room where they created perovskite to another where they tested it in order to have time to collect data before the substance self-destructed. This was since the new substance reacted very strongly to moisture and air. Moreover, problems arose with an increase in the coverage area. With small sizes, photocells with perovskite showed very good efficiency. But with an increase in size, the efficiency dropped sharply, up to 5% losing out to traditional solar cells. There is also an environmental problem. Lead must be used in production, which is quite toxic, although not as strong as calcium tetrachloride. Scientists today see a solution using less toxic pewter instead of lead. Thus, many companies had to go a long way to study and create a commercial technology for using perovskite. Thus, for instance, it took the Sol Technologies Polish company eight years to totally go from studying perovskite to the creation of the first production line in 2021. The company introduces two types of products, photovoltaic glass and solar blinds. 
The first works on the principle of most types of solar panels, but with high efficiency and service life. The second product's solar blinds are built into windows and perform a wide range of tasks, from generating electricity to protecting a room from excess heat. The Salt Technologies itself does not disclose its technical characteristics except for one. One square meter will be able to generate voltage up to 170 watts. The plant's capacity is 40,000 square meters of panels per year, which will be able to produce about 10 megawatts of electricity. An interesting approach to perovskite was taken by the Oxford PV British company. They decided to combine silicon and perovskite elements into one solar cell. This led to the fact that they were able to set the world record for efficiency of 29.52% and at the same time reduce the cost of one element. The tandem elements are planned to be produced at a special plant in Germany where construction work is currently underway. As CTO Chris Case notes, the process of creating the elements will be very simple. There are three machines for the perovskite. It also takes three machines for the HJT, effectively six big machines. The total capacity of the plant will be 100 megawatts per year. The company is already looking for workers for the plant. The line is planned to be open in early 2022. The company is confident that following the start of this production line, they will be able to quickly ramp up production to gigawatt capacity. But the Energy Materials Corporation American company decided to rely on the speed and automation of production. They started to produce solar cells using special roll-to-roll -roll printing. And by January 2021, they were able to set a world record for the speed of creation – 60 meters of canvas per minute. They also automated the process, making the entire element in one process. A key piece of our high-speed, low-cost model is to print all the layers of our solar module in one continuous inline process. Typical transparent conductors are manufactured using a high-temperature vacuum deposition process that is more than 10 times too slow to be integrated into our high-speed inline system, stated Dr. Tom Toombs, EMC CTO. The company plans to further develop high-speed production. In this, they are actively supported by the Solar Energy Technology Office, or SETO, under the U.S. Department of Energy. Different countries, different companies, different approaches. They are all united by a new substance, synthetic perovskite. This material, according to scientists, should help humanity in the fight against climate change. And who knows, maybe in a couple of years, we will be using even more environmentally friendly and cleaner sources of renewable energy.